Welcome to the History of Simple Things, where we delve into the fascinating history behind the little things that shape our world. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're tackling a crucial part of the technological world that many of us rely on every day but rarely think about, cell towers. These tall, unassuming structures are the backbone of modern communication, enabling everything from voice calls to streaming videos and social media browsing. But how do they actually work? What goes on behind the scenes when you make a phone call, send a text, or load a web page? In this video, we'll break down the inner workings of cell towers and explore how they keep our world connected. Let's start with the basics. At its core, a cell tower is part of a larger system known as a cellular network, which divides geographic areas into small regions called cells. These cells overlap slightly to provide continuous coverage, so when you use your phone, it communicates with the nearest cell tower within its designated cell. This setup allows mobile phones to stay connected to the network even as they move from one cell to another. In fact, that's why we call them cellular phones in the first place, because they rely on these interconnected cells to maintain your connection. Each of these cell towers houses antennas and transceivers that transmit and receive signals from your mobile device. When you place a call or access the internet on your phone, your phone converts your voice or data into radio waves. These radio waves are then sent to the nearest cell tower which picks them up using its antennas. The tower then sends your information to the core network, which routes it to its intended destination. Be that a phone call, text, or data request. From start to finish, this process happens almost instantaneously, allowing us to communicate in real time, no matter where we are. Now let's take a closer look at what goes into a cell tower. Though the antennas on top of the tower get all the attention, the real magic happens in the equipment shelters or cabinets located at the base. These shelters contain crucial hardware like signal amplifiers, base stations, power supplies, and more. Together, these components process the signals received by the tower and ensure that they're transmitted accurately across the network. They also manage important tasks like directing signals to other towers, allocating resources, and making sure your phone remains connected to the network without interruption. So how exactly does your phone know which tower to connect to? The answer lies in something called a cell, the geographical area that each tower serves. These cells vary in size depending on the location. For example, in a densely populated city, cell towers cover smaller areas to accommodate the high number of users while in rural areas where fewer people are trying to connect, the cells can be much larger. No matter the size, each cell is typically split into three sectors, which are pie-like slices radiating out from the tower. Each sector has its own dedicated antenna, allowing the tower to serve multiple users simultaneously while minimizing interference. When you make a call or use data, your phone automatically connects to the closest tower within your cell. As you move, say, while driving or walking, your phone continuously monitors the strength of the signals from nearby towers. When it detects a stronger signal from a different tower, the network performs a process known as a handoff. During a handoff, your connection is transferred from one tower to the next without interrupting your service. This is what allows you to move freely without dropping calls or losing your data connection. However, handoffs aren't always seamless. In areas with poor coverage or where towers are far apart, you might experience dropped calls or slower data speeds during a handoff. Now that we understand the basics of how cell towers work, let's take a step back and consider the role of frequencies. Cell towers communicate with phones using radio frequencies. These frequencies are divided into bands, with each carrier owning a specific set of bands they use for communication. Generally, lower frequencies, like those in the 700 MHz range, can travel farther and penetrate buildings better, 
making them ideal for providing coverage in rural areas. Higher frequencies, such as those in the 2.6 GHz range, offer more bandwidth, which is crucial in urban environments where many people are using data simultaneously. As you might imagine, balancing these frequencies is key to providing consistent service. In urban areas with tall buildings, carriers often use lower frequencies to ensure good indoor coverage, while higher frequencies are deployed in outdoor areas to handle heavy data usage. Rural areas, on the other hand, rely more heavily on lower frequencies since the priority is covering larger distances rather than managing high traffic. One of the most exciting developments in cellular technology is the advent of 5G or fifth generation cellular technology. Promises to deliver faster data speeds, lower latency, and higher capacity than previous generations. To achieve these impressive feats, 5G networks rely on a mix of traditional cell towers and smaller structures called small cells. Unlike the towering structures we're used to, small cells are often mounted on utility poles or buildings, providing more localized coverage in high traffic areas like downtowns, stadiums, or airports. These small cells are particularly important for 5G because 5G uses millimeter wave frequencies, which are much higher than the frequencies used by 4G or 3G. While millimeter waves can carry more data, they have a much shorter range and struggle to penetrate obstacles like buildings or even trees. As a result, 5G networks require a denser deployment of small cells to ensure consistent coverage and high speeds. The result is a network that can support not just faster downloads, but also emerging technologies like virtual reality, autonomous vehicles, and the Internet of Things. But cell towers and small cells don't work in isolation. They're part of a larger network of infrastructure known as the backbone. The backbone is a vast system of fiber optic cables and microwave links that connect cell towers to the internet and other global networks. When you send a text or browse the web, your data doesn't just bounce between local towers, it travels over the backbone to reach the wider internet. This backbone is responsible for moving massive amounts of data quickly and efficiently, making it a crucial part of any cellular network. While the technology behind cell towers is impressive, there are still some challenges that carriers face in providing consistent coverage. For one, building and maintaining cell towers is expensive. This is especially true in rural or remote areas where the population density is low, making it less profitable for carriers to invest in infrastructure. To address this, companies have started exploring alternative solutions like using drones, satellites, or even balloons to provide coverage in hard to reach places. Additionally, environmental concerns and local zoning regulations can slow the construction of new towers, particularly in protected areas or near historical landmarks. Looking to the future, many experts believe that 5G is just the beginning. In the coming years, we could see the development of 6G networks, which would push the boundaries of speed, capacity, and connectivity even further. These next-generation networks could power advances in artificial intelligence, smart cities, and augmented reality, creating new possibilities for how we live, work, and communicate. In conclusion, cell towers are an integral part of the modern world, enabling the seamless communication and connectivity we've come to rely on. From voice calls to video streaming, mobile networks depend on these towering structures to deliver data and keep us connected, no matter where we are. As technology continues to evolve, cell towers will remain at the heart of our communications infrastructure, supporting everything from the smartphones in our pockets to the smart cities of the future. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this deep dive into the world of cell towers, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more content just like this. See you next time.
Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.